flat back, lead with your chest, neutral spine. This is how everyone says you should deadlift. But what if I told you this isn't the best way to achieve your absolute max? We're gonna break down how you should actually deadlift and we're gonna give you exercises that you can use to boost that deadlift weight as high as possible. And we're gonna start right now. <sighs> to start off, there's actually three types of conventional deadlift techniques that we're going to use when we're talking about the deadlift. First, there's going to be the weightlifter deadlift. This would be like the clean pull or a clean deadlift or potentially even a snatch deadlift. That's going to be set with a much more arched back so it transfers very well to the weightlifting world. And then there's going to be the strongman deadlift. Strap-ons are always going to be mandatory. And then finally, the power lifter deadlift, okay? So this is going to be what we see power lifters do when they're actually inside of a competition. And for today's discussion, we are only going to be talking about conventional deadlifts. Now, the weightlifting deadlift, the quote unquote correct way to deadlift is typically what is being taught. And one of the big issues here is that it's actually not the best way to deadlift, but it has a tremendous carryover to the world of actual Olympic weightlifting. So one of the big factors is that when we're rounding our back and doing a clean pull or a clean deadlift, that's going to put us into a bad position specific to the weightlifting world. And this is going to lead to missed lifts. So one thing that we want to do if we're using a clean deadlift or a clean pull is that we want to make sure that first of all, we're establishing where is our foot position for the clean, specific to the clean. So we want to get to the point where we have that back arch, that upper back has to be arched and we want to pack our lats right here. And we will pack our lats when we're doing a traditional conventional deadlift as well, but we want to pack our lats here and then almost think about our chest coming up from the sternum. I want to see that sternum coming up and that's going to help us stay a bit more arched. So we're going to get set here, come up and we can either do a shrug for a clean pull or if we're going very heavy, we're going to go here, back, boom, up. Okay, and notice I didn't plantar flex there. Here, boom. As the bar gets past our knees, we're gonna start to load the quads a little bit more than we would in a traditional deadlift. This is very similar to when we're doing a trap bar deadlift, okay? We're gonna get set, back and chest comes up, and it's gonna be quite a bit more focus on the quad firing. So if we're looking at strongman or power lifter based deadlifting, that pull is done when the weight gets into the crease. If we're looking at the sport of weightlifting, that pull does not end here. Okay, that pull accelerates even further and then we have to get into that catch position where the bar is very tight. So having a tighter back and having a flat or slightly arched back will help load the quads and the hamstrings actually. And then when the hips come through and help you accelerate that finish, that's when we learn how to move that heavy weight very, very fast. And that's the name of the game in the sport of Olympic weightlifting. What we just discussed is how most coaches actually tend to teach and coach the deadlift. Now, what if we watch some of the strongest deadlifters in the world? Let's say strongmen, let's say power lifters, and we're watching them deadlift. What do they actually do? They actually round their back. But why would they round their back? And to that point, does rounding their back actually improve the amount of weight that they can lift. And this is where I want you guys to envision lifting a stone, the Husafelt stone. Lifting a stone requires you to set your back in relation to that natural object when you're out in the world. Now, it's important to also recognize that when you're setting your back with that stone, we're not rounding our back and just being squirmy here. We're setting that back, squeezing our abs, flexing our lats, even, even flexing our pecs quite a bit, and that's going to help us lift in that strong position. So minus the grip of lifting that stone, that stone lift, that stone position is going to be very, very similar to the position that we want to hit when we're actually achieving that big time deadlift. It's not going to be the exact same, but the principles carry over incredibly well. Again, that rounding should be slight just to gain that advantageous position to freaking jack up the amount of weight on the bar. I can already anticipate the comments. What about that safety for the lower back? Aren't you gonna blow out a disc? 
and that's really gonna take us into the technique that we're looking for. When we're trying to establish simple deadlift technique, the first thing that we have to look at is trying to establish that stance. It's not easy to say that the stance should follow this exact prescription for everybody, but let's just say shoulder width apart. Start there. If it feels comfortable, roll with it. If it doesn't feel comfortable, you can move your feet in. You can move your feet slightly wider. It's really dependent upon the individual. I like to pull with a more narrow stance. I wanna drop and I shouldn't have my arms too wide or too narrow. It should just be if my hands are hanging, I get set. When I get set, I like to think about pulling the slack out of the bar. Get that tension set and then go. I like to think about the front part of my head here. Okay, I wanna pack my neck back like this, okay? And I'm gonna have tension set. So right here, I've got a little bit of that forward rounding position. Okay, I'm not too forward, just packed a little bit with that neck back. I'm gonna get set, and then when I get here, okay, I wanna have tension pulling out of the bar. So if I have 600 pounds, 700 pounds on the bar, I'm gonna feel that tension, feel that tension, and then freaking drive as fast as possible. Once we get past this point right around here, okay, I want to think, bring the hips through, bring the hips through, bring the hips through. Okay, so sometimes that point of thinking about the hips coming through might happen here. Some people might happen right around the knee, but drive through that flat foot and extend the hips through. Now, one thing I did just do a little bit of an error because I was demonstrating more through the clean deadlift technique is that I want to think coming backwards here and then almost as I'm falling backwards, extending my hips, but the big factors here. Set that head here, packing it back, okay? Eyes neutral, but then as I drive up, I wanna think this part of my head goes like basically straight vertical while I'm slightly rounded in that upper back. So I'm not here like a weightlifter, I'm rounded just a hair forward, I can get set, boom, here. So there's gonna be four freaking sweet accessories that you guys can use to strengthen your positions with that slightly round back deadlift. Now, that first exercise is going to be the Jefferson Curl. I like to use the Jefferson Curl to really, really warm up my entire back. Think about the erector spinae really, really becoming a bit more mobile, okay? And you're gonna have that rounded position here on the Jefferson Curl. So one thing that I like to do is standing on these boxes. Now, what you guys can do is if you don't have these boxes, you can stand on plates. You can stack some plates up. Start with just that barbell. And you can almost just get into this position here, okay? And you'll even feel this in your hamstrings and think about unraveling the entire body all the way up and then starting to re-ravel here all the way back down. Okay, so we're gonna get set here. And then pack that back down, all the way down. Oh, I feel back here, all the way down. Oh, that feels so good. Now you can do this for like three to four sets of seven to nine reps to really strengthen that entire back and get ready for that big round back deadlift that you're gonna use to hit some monster PRs. Now the next exercise is another specialty specific to garage strength. Okay, so the next exercise is going to be using a glute ham. And I want you to keep your knees bent. Keep your knees bent and slightly rounded. And one thing that we can do when we're doing a knees bent glute ham is that we can use something like a safety squat bar, which is gonna force us to just round slightly. And I'm gonna show you another variation with dumbbells. Typically I would do this like five sets of seven, five sets of nine, somewhere in that realm. And then maybe a crazy, crazy drop set for even more hamstring stimulation. I wanna try my best to keep my ankles dorsiflex. I wanna try very, very hard. It's very hard to do that, but try your best to stay dorsiflexed. In this position, typically, if you were smart, you would have a spotter, okay? You would not be a total goon and put this bar on your neck like I'm gonna try to do right now. Hopefully it actually works. I'm gonna think about rounding, come back up right here. So it's a little bit of that short stroke that you guys are used to. So if we get set here, all right, here we go. Oh yeah, here, Ooh. oh there I got the dorsiflexion. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Okay, so we can demonstrate it like that. Or here with dumbbells, a little round. So 
use those two variations. One thing I'm gonna throw in here, there's a recent study about eccentric speed in the Nordic hamstring exercise. And I believe if you can build up over 10 to 12 weeks of general movement patterns here with this specific movement, as you get stronger and more explosive, you can start to drop a little bit more in the eccentric, but we're gonna save that for another video. There's also variations that you guys can use to go a little bit heavier. And if you guys are looking to go heavier and to have a lot of exercises to help your body stabilize and pack those lats, set that upper back, and even pull with serious tension to the floor, the Peak Strength app gives you the best opportunity available to have that freak training in your pocket. And you can start your journey today to become a champion by heading over to the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store, or peakstrength.app where you can download Peak Strength today. And you can get a free week of training to try and push yourselves to that monster deadlift. And that's gonna take us to our next heavy variation, the snatch grip deadlift. Now, as a power lifter or a strongman, you can train this very, very easily with a slightly rounded back. If you're a weightlifter, I recommend sticking that chest out and keeping that upper back as tight as possible. One big factor here is that the wider grip is going to increase that range of motion. And I wanna throw in another little variable. If we would elevate ourselves, stand on a podium or even on like two bumpers, that's gonna be an even crazier amount of range of motion. This is something that Charles Poliquin used to talk about quite a bit, snatch grip deadlift on a podium. That's how you get a really, really strong back. This would look like establishing that snatch grip. For weightlifting, I like to go collar to collar, okay? And I wanna have that foot position be very, very similar to when I'm snatching, almost identical or identical. I wanna think about here, okay? And I wanna push my knees back, have my chest come up. And then the hips come through. Back again. Ooh, come through. Now, I can keep that rounded position and think about the top of my head getting up with having that neck pack here if I'm thinking more about powerlifting. So you can use that snatch grip deadlift. One, you can push this pretty freaking heavy. Let's build up over four triples and then do a drop set of six with a touch and go position. Or if you wanna just use this as an accessory, another thing that you can do is actually start with that high butt position, if you really wanna light up those hamstrings and think about extension from the hips as you get into that lockout. The final variation is gonna be a movement that a lot of you are gonna be like, oh no, this is a CrossFit exercise, but we can use this to really reverse engineer that slightly rounded back position and to have more tension. And this is gonna be a top down deadlift. So one thing that I want to mention is that when I deadlifted 705, one thing I used was top down deadlifts at 300 kilos for triples. And I wanted to use that cheat code, this little position here that's gonna create a stretch shortening cycle. Get set in that position here, boom. I already have that neck packed, right? Right here. I'm gonna get a little tap. One more. Okay, and that little drop, remember, we talked about the research of the Nordic hamstring and the high speed eccentric and that helping to load up the hammies. It's the same principle here when we're talking about that top down deadlift. So you guys can use these accessories because remember, freaks, you should do top down deadlifts, five sets of five, five sets of seven. You've always got to cultivate your power. Peace.